Ah, hello, friends, and welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. Dr. Barry has been in Las Vegas. Yes, without just, my wife. He just got home. And you know what they say about Vegas. But I'm going to tell you the truth about Vegas. Vegas sucks if you don't take your wife. Yeah, if I hadn't had any friends there, if it had just been me. You would have went. Oh, it would suck so bad. Anyway. Yeah, if you missed it, their uh, kids got sick, then we got sick, and then my parents got sick who were keeping the kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I stayed home. So I went alone went. to Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Earth. And it was not much, <laughs> not much fun. Not much fun. Welcome, welcome. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up or the heart, please do so right now. It helps the engagement. It helps the platform know that this is valuable information that will help improve the health of the entire world. How are you doing? I'm tired. <laughs> Can I just say you look beautiful? Thank you. And you actually are beautiful too. So that, there's that. Thank you. All right. I've got a question here from Michael. I got to get this one. Michael said, I had a live blood cell analysis and was told I have parasites in my blood. Any advice on the best way to eliminate them? Okay, Michael. You almost certainly have been hoodooed, as Granddaddy Barry would say. You've been, you've been tricked. You've been taken to the cleaners. If you literally had parasites in your blood, you would be hospitalized, okay? Having parasites in your bloodstream is a big damn deal. You're, you're really sick if you have parasites. 99% chance you don't have any parasites in your blood. Uh, unless a doctor looked at a microscopic slide and said, oh my God, you have parasites in your blood. We've got to get you in the hospital right now. That's What's a live blood cell analysis? I'm not sure. That sounds like some bullshit to me. But so if that's what happened and you're currently in the hospital getting IV therapy, then OK. Anti-parasitic. Yeah, you, you had parasites and they're now fixing that. But if this is somebody online that you that looked somehow magically at your blood and said, oh, you've got parasites in there and they didn't tell you to go immediately to the ER, this is bullshit. OK, so if you truly believe you have parasites in your blood, go to the emergency department right now. That's how big of a deal it is. Okay, thank you. I just had to get that one because that was that was bothering me just a little bit. Any announcements? Any updates? Anything going on in the world? My my lovely lovely no, partner. No, just exhausted from being here with the kids. Without you, you're a big help. <laughs> and also, I don't sleep really good when Ken's not here. I slept crap the whole time. Yeah, so I'm tired. The third night I was well, there, I was just recovering like recovering from the stomach bug. I right, think, right. For sure. The last night I was there, I'm just like, I'm not even going to bed. I stayed up to 1 30 because if I went to bed, I couldn't go to sleep. Yeah. The kids yeah. are fully recovered. They've bounced back just like kids yeah. do. Everybody's recovered. I'm taking a little longer. But that's mostly because I didn't have any sleep. <laughs> I think if I'd slept properly. I'd be okay. Mm, that's probably true. Yeah. Oh, Michael says they looked at a blood drop from a finger stick. Yeah. Michael, if you have parasites in your blood, go to the ER right now. But if they said, oh, you've got parasites, you need to buy all these supplements. Yeah. I'm just going to let you figure that out for yourself. All right. Let's see what's going on here. Kim says, Kim says, no. No. Kim says, how is Hashimoto's diagnosed? I, I am hypothyroid, but some other autoimmune issue going on, waiting for an appointment for further diagnosis. My ENA is positive. Ah, gotcha. So you do have another autoimmune condition, uh, but you may also have Hashimoto's. Mm -hmm. what, what would Kim need to get checked? Well, I'm just a nurse, so. <laughs> but I do have Hashimoto's and uh we had a full thyroid panel, which included more than a TSA, free T3, free T4, uh, TPO antibodies. Uh, what are the other antibodies? TG. TG Animal. antibodies. Yep. And then also symptoms, mm -hmm. what your symptoms are. That comes into play. So early on, my symptoms were horrible, but technically I didn't have a diagnosis via labs, even though I was having horrible symptoms. But over time the antibodies were raised and I was officially diagnosed, but that whole time I had Hashimoto's. So don't poo poo on your symptoms. Even if your labs come back normal, definitely keep digging around and 
find yep. out exactly yep. what's going on. Yep, but a TPO <laughs> antibody and a TG antibody, those are the two tests to that will figure out if you have an autoimmune thyroid condition or not. Oh man, here we this is we're having some hits tonight. Listen to this one. Jen, my 87, 86 year old mom's type 2 diabetic, CKD3. Her last A1C was 6.0, no extreme low blood sugars. She's been ketovore for nine months, so she's almost, uh, she's no longer type 2 diabetic. She's about to reverse it completely, but her doc is not happy. Wants her A1C to be between 7 and 8. Says that's better for elderly people. Your thoughts on needing higher A1C in elderly people? I'm going to, let me just zen in for a second here because I don't want to lose my composure. I feel like you want to lose your composure tonight. <laughs> Jen, your mother's doctor, how do I put this gently, is a complete moron. Okay? Now, if if your mom was using lots of insulin to beat down her blood sugar, to get it down to six or lower, that could potentially be dangerous. And that's what your doctor is thinking about, but is not thinking about this completely. Your mom's not injecting insulin to get her blood sugar down. She's eating fewer carbohydrates. There's a study that your doctor's talking about, but it was about intensive insulin therapy for people like your mom to get that A1C back down to 5.6 with insulin. It has nothing to do with food. Her doc's an idiot. Okay. Your mom is doing exactly the right thing. What your mom's doing is going to help her live longer. It may even help partially or completely reverse her chronic kidney disease. It's going to completely reverse her type 2 diabetes. Uh, you got two options here. Either fire her doctor's ass, which is probably is what you should do after you see him in person and have a few words. Or B, if she loves her doctor, and I, you know, older people sometimes love their doctor, then you need to go and have an outside say, Doc, can I talk to you in the hall for a second? and have a little chat and say, look, I don't want to fire you, but if you say anything else stupid like that, you're going to get fired. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Derek, okay. I scramble eggs every day in bacon grease and grilled burgers on my flat top in bacon grease. Can someone have too much bacon grease? Been carnivore two years. Well, I guess that depends on who you ask, but you're here and you're asking us. And we're going to tell you. And we're going to tell you. We eat bacon grease in the South. Every mm -hmm. single day. I just had two pounds of ground beef fried in bacon grease. Bacon grease. Uh, yes. We utilize bacon grease for many, many, many things. Mm -hmm. I sometimes just eat bacon grease on bacon. Sometimes. And she's now go ahead and tell the whole truth. She sometimes That's eats bacon grease that. with a spoon out of the bacon grease no, holder. No, no. I've seen you do it. No, I've never done Your dad that. caught you eating bacon that grease. That was on a piece of bacon. Oh, okay. All right. Which is not, I don't guess any better if you hate bacon and you think it's going right. to kill you. Exactly. So theoretically, <laughs> Derek, yes. If you joined the, the county fair bacon eating contest and you ate 14 pounds of bacon grease, that could maybe be a problem. But if the bacon grease tastes delicious and you're eating it and you're like, oh, it's so good. No, you're never going to eat too much bacon grease. Look, this all, everything, 99% of the questions yeah. that mm -hmm. are coming mm -hmm. tonight on this hour, if you're new, welcome are going to have this answer. It depends on how well you tolerate bacon grease. Yep. Because if you eat too much one day, guess what's going to happen? Yeah, you you're going to have that. disaster pants, yeah. right? You're, no, you're, you're going to know exactly when you're eating too much. Yep. Now you can dive deeper and be like, what is that? Omega-6s and Omega-3s and blah, blah, blah. Look, does it make you happy? Do you feel great? Are you living a really good life right mm -hmm. now? Do your labs reflect what you want them to reflect? And eat your bacon grease. Bacon grease is so wonderful. There's a song, okay? Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Oh. It's fine. Where do you think bacon grease comes from? Bacon. Eat your bacon. It's fine. Or don't if you don't. Or don't. Want. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. Eat fat. Female, 32 years of age, autoimmune hepatitis takes uh, nine milligrams budesonide. Any advice, or will carnivore help her condition, regardless of the 100 other benefits? Yeah. So. The the carnivore diet, especially predominantly ruminants, beef, sheep, and goat, is the most liver protective diet on planet Earth. Okay, uh, carnivore is going to protect her liver. It's her liver is going to have to work much much harder 
if she's eating lots of fruit or she's drinking fruit juice or fruit juice smoothies, if she's eating lots of vegetables because they contain fructose as well, definitely if she's drinking Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, Mountain Dew, yes, that's going to destroy her liver. But eating meat is good for your liver. It's not bad for you. Now, less steak and more ground beef. Is that okay on triple B and E? Yeah, whatever you like, whatever you can afford. If all you can afford is that that discount 10-pound stick of ground beef that looks like a huge stick of bologna from the discount grocery, yeah. That's... But also, some people don't actually like steak. Did true. You know that? No, that's true. Yes, that's some true. Some people prefer ground beef, and mm -hmm. then it's fine. It's totally you fine. see all these carnivores, and all they eat is ribeyes, yeah. and you don't actually like ribeye. Right. Just eat your burgers. There's nothing as long as they're fatty. Yeah. You know, get the fatty. There's nothing magical about steak. It's just beef that hasn't been ground up. Ground ground beef is steak that's been ground up. Well, it's other parts too, I guess, depending on how but, cheap the ground beef is. But right, but I mean it's all just cow meat. Yeah. It's, it's cow meat. It's all beef. Yeah, yeah. 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 As long as it says 100 percent beef, huzzah, wear yeah, it out. Try to get the fattier. Yes, yes. Fattier mixtures, I guess. Yes. Fattier uh, grind, grinds. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Dropping bear survivor. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on APOE4 genes and mm -hmm. how avoiding saturated fat is important for people with these genes in regards to Alzheimer's and cardiovascular diseases. Yes. So APOE4 genes, that is a real thing. There is a test that will tell you if you have that or not. Uh, but what then the next part of the sentence is absolutely false that oh, eating saturated fat has been proven to increase the risk of Alzheimer's and cardiovascular disease in people who are APO, APOE4 positive. That's not true. That's never been proven. Okay. That is uh, some people's opinion. You know what they say about opinions. They're kind of like sphincters. Everybody's got one and they all don't smell that great. Right. So, yeah, APOE4 genes are real, but that does not mean you can't eat saturated fat. You're a human being. You're a homo sapien sapien. You need to eat fatty red meat. The end. No exception. Michelle. Hey, Dr. Barry and Misha. I recently got diagnosed with uh, PVC. Is it still safe to continue the carnivore diet? Keep up the amazing work. Absolutely. 100 percent. Regardless of what heart condition you have. Fatty red meat is a health food for you. And I'm talking to you who's sitting there right now going, yeah, but I've got so-and-so. I don't care. It doesn't matter. There's never been a single medical condition diagnosed in a human being that, except for alpha-gal where you, where you can safely say it's been proven that you should avoid eating red meat. Any heart condition, eat your meat. The end. This is not medical advice. That's right. This is just this a doctor and nurse talking. This is YouTube. That's right. This is YouTube. I'll get this one. Uh, a bony, a bony eight fourteen. I'd like to know the backstory. <clears throat> I think it's Abony, maybe. Maybe Abony, but I like a bony better. Three month carnivore. Total cholesterol two forty nine. HDL uh, forty seven. LDL one seventy nine. Triglycerides one hundred seven. Uh, celiac DCP IgO. And oh gosh, oh my goodness. Okay, total protein of uh, blah, 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 blah. Thank you for all you do. Uh, your A1C is a little high. Definitely, you need to cut the carbs a little bit more. Your HSCRP is definitely high. Uh, that could be from your diagnosis, uh, or it could be from 20 other things. You're, you got one plus ketones, so we know you're eating pretty darn low fat, a low carb. That's good. Your glucose is okay. Yeah, you got to cut the carbs a little bit more. Hey, Boney. A meaty life. I feel like you should say it breathy. Do it. Love you guys. Shensonette here. Oh, this yeah. guy does my YouTube channel. Four and a half months after 18 months bedridden with ME and CFS, playing with my horse, walking half a mile, sleeping like a baby, meet heels. And yeah, Las Vegas sucks. <laughs> uh, Way to go. That's an amazing result. That's I'm so, so awesome. happy to hear that. Yeah, huzzah. I, I, I'm so, I guess that's an unpopular opinion. I'm sure the Vegas marketing people don't like it when I say that, but. I don't think they're hurt. I think they'll be fine. Take your sweetheart to Vegas. That can be fun. Yeah, but don't just go to Vegas by yourself. Hey, Winter. Hey, Winter. Thank you so much. Hey, Judith, Judith, thank Super you. Super sticker. Peter, uh, Peter, appreciate the trustworthy information and encouragement. That's, That's the right. main reason we're here. That's right. right. That's right. Lori, started carnivore on Sunday, cold turkey, because I can't moderate. 
good on you for understanding yourself and your limitations. Good for you. Thank you for everything you do. All started with finding your videos. I'm prepared and living off corned beef right now. Yeah. I'm so glad I found I you. love it. I love it. Now, did you hear what Lori P just said? It all started with finding your videos. There's people out there right now suffering and you can help them discover a proper human diet by clicking the share button and sharing this video. That's how Lori did it. And now she's feeling better. Preston. Preston. I love that name. Preston. Beckett's middle name almost was Preston. Yep. My brother's name is John, John Preston. Preston. Yeah. Oh, wait, wasn't that? Hey, Doc, how frequent have you heard of people with bipolar being able to go off their meds? I've been on mine for a little over a year. 1,000 milligrams Depcoat, 50 milligrams Seroquel. Are those typically high dosages? Thank you. Those are not terribly high doses. Uh, we have had a lot of people, in, especially in the carnivore community. Now, it happens in keto high as well. Fat. But high fat, so high fat keto or high fat carnivores are very often able to, with the help of their help, provider. their mental health provider, decrease their psychiatric medications. And in many cases, keep decreasing until they just stop them and they Slowly. don't need them anymore. Yes. Under yes, medical yes, yes. supervision. Um, and then they also see the symptoms of coming off those meds are not quite as severe as if they were trying to come off them eating the standard American diet. That's what we've seen anecdotally. Uh, if you would like to read more about this, Dr. Georgia E just came out with her book that focuses a lot on mental health. And then there's also one called Brain Energy. By and Dr. That's Chris Palmer. By Dr. Chris Palmer. Those both focus on mental mm -hmm. health and diet and how those things, hey, did you know they're connected? It matters what you eat yep. and how your brain functions, especially when it comes to anxiety, yep. depression, OCD, PTSD, mm -hmm. any of those things. And there's a ton of research going on in the mental health sphere right now about using ketogenic diets and carnivore is a subset of keto, mm -hmm. right? For mental health diseases. And I predict now, you can put me on the record, within five years, we're going to know that every single mental health disorder is at least to some degree metabolic in nature, including things like schizophrenia and severe bipolar disorder. These things, autism, these things are at least in part metabolic disorders caused by eating an improper diet. They're epigenetic and with poor diet, the epigenetic gets turned on by the inflammation and the hyperinsulinemia. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. The Just hyperglycemia, right the hyperinsulinemia, yeah. then the, epi the inflammation in the, in the parts in the brain, of the brain, yeah. and then the epigenetic switches get flipped the wrong way. Voila, you got schizophrenia. Look into those books if you're someone who has family or if you yourself struggle with yep. mental health and want to learn more. Those are great. Now... Beef liver peels okay, or instead of actual liver. If you just want to pay extra for the exact same thing. Right. Yeah. So I don't think that the like the desiccated liver capsules and liver peels, I don't think they're as good as eating actual liver. They're less good, but they're not bad. And they're definitely better than nothing. So you could either just suck it up and learn to eat liver and just buy the liver, which is not expensive, or you could pay out the nose for the liver capsules. And it's not going to be as good, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah, there's there's benefits. Brittany C. Here's Brittany C. I'm allergic to all red meat. I am eating poultry and fish, but I hear these just listed as options to eat sometimes. Will this be a problem? No, me? not at all. Now, are you, first of all, let me ask you, Brittany, are you truly allergic to Do you have a histamine reaction? Is that what right. you mean? Do you have, have anaphylaxis, you, hives? Have you tried unaged red meat because we have a, several people mm -hmm. that we know of that when they switch to lamb, goat, those meats that typically aren't aged before they get to the grocery store, they go direct to the source and get it butchered yep. fresh from farm to table yep. that they can tolerate those kinds of red meat a little bit better. Yep. And if you buy beef from a local rancher and a local butcher, you can tell them, I don't want you to hang it in the meat locker for 14 days, which is what happens to most beef. I want it straight from the cow's butt cheek to my plate. And for many people who, who do have a little response to red meat, when they eat it unaged, all of a sudden they can eat it just fine. And also grass finished beef. Sometimes it seems to be for people like you less inflammatory, but no, if you, if you truly are allergic to red meat and you are going to be for the rest of your life, you can do carnivore just fine with all the different fish in the rivers and the seas, all the different crustaceans and, and mollusks that people eat. And then everything that flies in the air. Also, don't forget the things that slither, creep, and crawl. You can eat those too. It's fine. Nobody wants to do that. Ashley. 
um, over 500 days free of clonazepam. Good. And we are so proud of actually. However, alcohol is still an mm. issue. Every time I wean or quit, I get really bad sugar craving. Yep. Tips on helping me remedy this. I gained 10 pounds and not in a good way. Love you both. Um, increasing your fat, maybe for six weeks, like really increasing it, maybe two to one mm -hmm. to temper that, but also help with the, the mental aspects mm -hmm. of it. Also, I'm not sure if you have a sponsor or someone that is like there for you to talk to when you have bad days, but getting someone like that to support you mentally Absolutely. that's going to help. And that can just be someone on Instagram or someone inside of our group that, you know, someone that will lean on you. And I know there are people in there, actually that would do mm -hmm. this for you. Absolutely. Um, so multiple people keep that in mind, but I think doing a two to one fat for you might help you get through mm -hmm. that. Month. And also keep in mind that sugar cravings, that is a momentary phenomenon. OK, so there doesn't need to be anything with sugar in your house, in your car or at the office. No, you got to make it really painful to have to. You have to get in your car. You have to get dressed. You have to run you down put to, pants the, on. to the piggly wiggly. That's right. You know what I mean? You have to go work. To right. Get that. And by doing that, what's going to happen is as you're putting your pants on and cursing, like <laughs> at some point, you're going to come back up to your executive function and go, what am I doing? Why am I going to Piggly Wiggly at 11 o'clock at night? No, I'm not doing that. And then you just broke that. Also, stay full all the time. Don't don't get hungry. Have carnivore snacks handy. High fat carnivore snacks. Have them already in the butter bites, yep. fat bombs, yep. those type yep. of things. So you have something. Yep. Like if you're craving sweets, do a fat bomb. They're yep. really simple to make, and it doesn't take a lot of sweetener sweetener to get that kind of sweet yep. taste. Just to get you through. Use those tools. Those are tools. Use absolutely them. absolutely foster foster nice name one of three all heavens oh gosh no, and we can't be doing a three-parter on here guys okay go ahead foster let's see feedback on my recent lab work feeling better but labs are mm, seeing doctor review later this week male 33 six foot 210 pounds down 25 pounds in three months of carnivore itch okay let's see foster is this part two no yeah, yep. yeah glucose 91 bun 30 alcohol 136 total cholesterol triglycerides are still high HDL still low uh you still got some healing to do a1c 5.3 that's <clears> great <throat> crp 0.35 that's great and then foster part three no oh oh you saw it okay uh insulin 5.6 that's fine apoB 128 i don't care about that total testosterone 816 that's great Free testosterone 25, DHEA 425, that's good. TSH, estradiol, uh, sex hormone binding globulin 53. Is that that's three? That's three. three. Okay. Three. Yeah. Foster, uh, all that looks pretty good, except your your trigs are still a little high and your HDL is a little low. Eat more fatty red meat and start lifting heavy things. Your testosterone's fine. All your other stuff is fine. Uh, don't worry about your total cholesterol or LDL cholesterol. There's more and more research coming out every single day showing that we that most doctors have greatly overestimated what the what the actual meaning of a high LDL cholesterol. Okay, you you need to focus on being metabolically healthy and you're pretty darn close. You got a little more work to do. Speaking of support, if you want to join our PhD health dot community website, it's a membership. You can join for a month. And if you don't like it, guess what? You can bounce right back out. But we do extra live Q and A's just like this one. We also have PhD coaches in there who do Zoom calls and live Q and A's as well. And then you're also just surrounded by people who are on the same journey as you, supporting you on your path, answering your questions. If you want to have a discussion, we have a group chat for you guys to hop in. There are people in there at 3 a.m. because we have people from all over the world yep. in every different time zone. You're never alone in there, okay? So yep. if you're interested in that, phdhealth.community. We also do exclusive interviews with some of the top keto carnivore and uh, carnivore influencers and doctors, nutritionists, dietitians, mm -hmm. psychologists, mm -hmm. all kinds of people. And you get to ask your questions during the live stream and then YouTube gets it on the replay. So that's right. If you're interested, the link is in the description or it should be if Dr. Barry has done his job. I've done my job. Hey, look at that. Federico. Federico. I'm in Texas and ready to start the keto, keto board diet. I love grilling and smoking food. Should I be worried about the carcinogens by grilling and smoking food? Yeah, guess what? Guess what, Federico? Your ancestors have been eating smoked food and grilled food for millions and millions of years. This is not a new thing. 
uh, Weber did not invent grilling meat, okay? Weber. Weber, you know, the grill. They did not invent that. Humans have been cooking meat over an open flame since we've been on planet Earth. If it caused cancer, we'd be extinct, okay? I don't know if any of you guys have ever tried to cook over just an actual fire with your meat stuck on a stick. It's going to get charred. It's going to get smoked. It, it, oh, those are carcinogens. No, I actually have a, a YouTube video about grilled meat and smoked meat. It, it's foolishness. There is no research that shows that I, that increases your risk of cancer. Now, if you're going to soak it in lighter fluid and then eat yeah, it. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Make sure you're doing it. Thanks, Skip. Oh, there's Foster. Okay, we got that. Daniel, 48 years old, eight months carnivore, down 77 pounds. Hold on. Started at 300. Feel amazing. Haven't felt this good since my early 20s. Dude. Did you guys just hear this? How many? How many months? Eight months. Seventy-seven pounds. Amazing, Daniel, my brother, Mike. Mike needed Mike, bites. Mike, Mike, Mike. Total cholesterol five forty. HDL fifty-seven. LDL four twenty-nine. Triglycerides still high at two seventy-seven. Proper human diet for one hundred ninety days. Feel amazing. I've lost forty pounds. Doc said never seen numbers like this. Advising meds. Could be a lean mass hyper responder. Yes, you could be. Do I introduce something like sweet potato? No, no. First of all, you're worried that your total cholesterol and your LDL cholesterol are high. They are high. Uh, mine are high as well. Is the has that been proven to be a risk factor for heart attack and stroke? Well, it depends on who you ask. In my opinion, no, it has not been proven. All the research was done by the statin companies. That's who paid for all the research. I'm not convinced. Uh, if Budweiser did a study and said, hey, guess what? Beer is good for you. You should drink beer. Would all y'all be like, well, shit, I guess we better drink beer. Or would you be like, wait a minute, Budweiser paid for this study? Well, that's how most of the lipid research was paid for, was by Zocor and Lip Lipitor and Crestor. That's who paid for the studies. Great. You can also ask for a CAC, mm -hmm. uh, which is a coronary artery, artery calcium, calcium score yeah. to get a better view of uh, the situation mm -hmm. put your doctor at ease put yourself at ease yep absolutely hang in laundry i love raw egg lattes please comment on raw egg safety yeah. good question they're amazing yeah. raw egg lattes are the best i have a video on my youtube channel on how to do that if you're like what that scrambled eggs and coffee no 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 it doesn't look like that is that see taste delicious raw eggs we eat them frequently yes uh different ways we make mayonnaise with raw eggs uh we mm. make day tar day tartare and mm. put a raw egg yolk on top we yes. do raw egg coffee um uh, what else um i often i often will take egg yolks raw and mix them with uh mustard. melted butter or with mustard and make a that that i turn that into a sauce that, that i then put on my steak or my ground beef and so I, I eat six raw eggs every day. Easy, easy, yeah. easy. You want as fresh as possible, high right. quality as possible. Right. You know, if you find an egg on the side of the road, it's probably not okay. And this you think a that's rule. a joke, but, you know, around here, yeah. you're liable to find one. Yeah, if you find an egg back behind the refrigerator, don't eat that don't egg eat raw. Don't eat raw. Right. Don't eat it double. Also, if the shell is cracked at all, when you pick it up, don't eat that one raw. Right. And if it has poop on it, if you have chickens you know rinse the poop off rinse the shell the first off. then eat it wrong then yeah it. absolutely pam doctor tries new twist to get me to take statins they protected the lining of the arteries doesn't care about the numbers again okay. complete foolishness this there's not a shred of truth to this there's no research to back that up pam this is just your doctor well meanly earnestly trying to trick you into taking a statin i'm sure your doctor believes that he or she's doing the right thing but this is foolishness. And I'm glad that you detected your your BS meter went beep, 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 beep. Thank you, Song That's Babe. Like song Babe. Tony, 54-year-old male, 375 pounds at my worst, uh, down to 225 pounds currently. Fasting insulin, 5.4. A1C went from 6 to 5.1. HDL, 61. Trig, 64. Dude. LDL 122, total cholesterol 199. Using carnivore to off the next 50 pounds. Ketivore makes the most sense to me. Yeah, whichever one sounds best to you, Tony. You can you can lose weight on any of them if you've got the weight to lose. So, huzzah, you're doing great. I hope you're teaching your friends and family how to do this. 
Nick. I never had Seborrheatics. 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 Dermatitis for 35 years of my life until the 2020 lockdowns happened, mm. and it's been real bad since then in my mm. eyebrows and beard area. Do you know any treatments that don't involve a topical application? Very interesting. It just popped up. Did you happen to get any injections during that time? Uh, or was it before that? Did you happen to catch any viruses during that time? Um, very odd. I mean, stress can definitely cause dermatitis to come out. But surely you've had stress before 2020. Have you cut out dairy? Some people say a real improvement in skin conditions yeah. when they cut out, especially uh, liquid dairy, but all dairy mm -hmm. to start at least for 30 days and see if it improves. I tell you what a lot of people did during 2020. Their diet went to shit in 2020. A lot of people. Right. That's four years ago. So I don't really know. That but that's when it started. And I'm, try I'm still trying to think about why it started. But yeah, Nisha's exactly right. I would do 90 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, Nick, before I took any medication whatsoever. Uh, so many people, so many people. Uh, I've got a dermatitis video on my YouTube channel. Just read the comments. Keto, keto, carnivore, your dermatitis is going to improve. Can you believe 2020 was four years it's ago? It's crazy. It's crazy. Hey, Holly, thank you so much. Rhonda, new to carnivore, just coming out of a severe Crohn's flare and having high blood pressure issues. Top numbers staying in the 160s all the way up to 190s. Any advice for immediate relief without medications? No. If your blood pressure is running that consistently, you need to go see your doctor and get on a blood pressure pill temporarily. That's okay. That's fine because ultimately you're going to fix this uh, with a carnivore diet. As you also fix your Crohn's, you're going to lower your insulin level back to normal, and that's going to cause your blood pressure to come back down. It says it. She said it's because of the severe. It could be. Disorder. Yeah, it so could be. If it's situational, like if you talk to your provider and carefully monitor it, it may come down. Maybe. On yes. Its own. Yes. But if not, then. But you know, you I predict your provider is going to say, you need to take just a little Lysinopril or a little Cozar for just a few weeks until this calms down. And I think that's perfectly appropriate just to lower your risk. Ancient carnivore nutrition. I'm having trouble staying carnivore when doing night shift. Mm -hmm. Yes, night shift it will make you crave junk. 100%. I feel like I'm starving all night, even if I eat a ton of meat. This causes me to splurge on carbs in the morning to help me yep. sleep. Any tips on how I can manage shift work? So the solution is to get off shift work but and work day it's shift. Hard, but especially it's, when you're making so much more mm -hmm. on the shift deal. Yeah, it's I know. I know. I remember, don't you? Yeah. You're I like, I make it. how much more an hour? Yeah, I'll do the that. The only reason I went to day shift is because I was like, I can't do this anymore. Because I was yep. very sick during yep. that time. Yep. But I would say, you know, why do you think the carbs are helping you get to sleep also? Yeah. When and, you, why are you splurging on carbs? You could have a uh, magnesium drink when you get home after work to help mm -hmm. with going to sleep. Mm -hmm. You could, some people find if they eat a butter bite or two, mm -hmm. that helps them mm -hmm. go to sleep. Um, you can yep. do a tea like valerian root, mm -hmm. uh, it's a natural herb yep. that helps you sleep. There's lots of ways touch of melatonin. to help. I promise you, it's not the car. So you just, you just are having a crash. You are. You're having a crash and the cortisol yeah. uh, spike in the morning and that's making you crave the carbs. Yeah. Now, a lot of people on shift work, you know what they do when they get off? They drink. Uh, they have a mixed drink or two so they can go to sleep. This is exactly the same thing that you're doing, but you're instead of alcohol, you're using carbs. So keep working on this, figure out a way around it because that's no bueno in the long term. And also try to get on day shift as soon as you can, as soon as you can, please. Uh, John, how do I know if I need electrolytes? John, are you human? I knew that's what you were going to say. <laughs> you need electrolytes. Now, do you need lots of extra electrolyte supplements? Maybe, maybe or maybe not. It depends on how much you sweat. If you have a, a, a desk job and the only time you sweat is when you, you know, in the bedroom or in the gym, then use electrolytes when you sweat. But if Are you're not you craving salt? Yeah. That's Are a good you way. low energy? Are mm -hmm. you having muscle spasms? Mm -hmm. muscle There's cramps. a lot of symptoms that you can Google them of, you know, that you're depleted. Yep. But if you're salting your food well and you're eating, you know, a proper human diet and you don't have any of those symptoms, then you probably are getting enough electrolytes. Yeah, Skip got a great question. What is your opinion of Equip Prime Beef Protein Powder? Well, Skip, since it has the word prime in it, it's, it, no, Skip, get your protein from meat, okay? 
get your branch chain amino acids from meat, get your amino acids from meat, get your protein from meat, get your protein from meat. Now, occasionally, once a month, if you're like, I'm late for work, I don't have time to eat meat, you can make an equipped protein drink. That's fine. I don't think it's bad for you. Of the protein shakes on the market, it's one of the best ones because Agreed. it is beef isolate protein Agreed. and not whey protein. Yes, and a lot of people have sensitivities to whey protein. Yep, I totally agree with that. But it's not anywhere nearly as good for you as eating beef. So there you go, Skip. Thank you. Eric, going to the Philippines in a few days. Lucky. Been there three times before, but not as a carnival. We're in a third world country. Any thoughts? They yeah. just have different cuts Dude, of meat. There's so much meat. We have mm -hmm. friends who live in the Philippines, and they're always posting pictures. There's meat everywhere. Now, it may not be. Interesting meat. That's right. It may not be the meat you're used to eating, but meat's meat. Eat it up. Enjoy it. Try some new meat. It's an adventure. Make yes. it your mission to find some mm -hmm. really cool. They probably have seafood. Oh, right, so much seafood. Seafood. So much seafood. Go to one of the markets. Yes, absolutely. Adventure out. Absolutely. Nico, what's your opinion on 5-alpha reductase inhibitors? Mm -hmm. Is long-term suppression of DHT in adult males healthy, or does hair have to go? So I, I think there are a few people on replacement therapy who might benefit from a reductase inhibitor. The vast majority of men, if they're using an appropriate amount of replacement, do not have to worry about this at all and don't need those. Good question. Nico, my friend, DNP. I'm told there are no required supplements while on carnivore. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. It depends. We'll, we'll get to that. When food is entered in chronometer, it shows I'm deficient in some vitamin or mineral areas. Yeah. So definitely it depends on which meats you eat. Now, if you're going to eat some liver, a couple of times a week and you're going to eat brain once a week and you're going to eat some spleen and some thymus gland and every now and then some testicle. No, you don't have to, you don't have to take a single vitamin or mineral supplement. Look, but, I'm not eating testicles. I said, but. And I also don't take any supplements. Okay. Right, right, right. And I, I don't think it's a big to? deal. Do you not yeah. need yeah. to? Most people thing. need some D3K2, depending on the time of the year. Most people, there's just not enough iodine in the diet, so they probably need some iodine supplementation. I came up with a daily mineral formula that Keto Chow makes for us uh, that has minerals that people are often deficient in because the soil is deficient in the minerals. And if the soil is deficient, then the cow ain't getting it from the grass. Does that make sense? So uh, if you're eating regeneratively raised grass finished beef, which we do, which we do then you're going to not need much supplementation at all. And if you're able to eat liver of some kind every now and then and get out in the sun, you probably don't need any supplementation at all on a carnivore Unless diet. Unless you've had a gastric bypass or some sort of surgery. Right. Then, yeah. Right. Yeah. You're going to because your 100%. intestines are not there anymore. You've had a whole section of intestines. Like yep. You know, there's exceptions to all of this, yes. you know, do what makes you feel good yes. and what your doctor is supporting you on. Find a good health care. What do you call them? Partner? Partner. Yeah. yeah. That's what your provider your doctor should be a be. partner. And do put the work until you find one that supports mm -hmm. this way of eating. And you don't have to call it keto. You don't have to call it. You just be like, I don't eat processed carbs. I don't eat gluten. Mm -hmm. You know, name it all the trigger stuff that the diet industry really loves. I eat only right? whole foods. Mm -hmm. I eat only organic, non-GMO. Regenerative. Yeah. Like, make it sound mainstream. Yes, absolutely. And right? if, if you, you have, have to drive... To Two hours to see a good doctor, it's I think it's, it. it's worth it, 100%, yes. Mr. Stu, my 10-year-old daughter has an undersized kidney and a duplex kidney. Yearly testing for protein in her urine. Uh, is there risk of this having such a high diet? diet? Did you mean high protein? So there's nothing about animal protein that's bad for kidneys, Mr. Stu. Animal protein is good for your daughter's kidneys, not bad for them. It's good for them. It's good that your daughter's eating lots of animal protein. It will protect her kidneys from the damage that would be done if she was eating a high-carb diet. Good question. S18018. I feel like there's a fire in our bedroom. Well, there is. She's got the sound machine on <laughs> campfire. Crackling. And every now and then I'm like. I also oh, have a yeah. candle that smells like a, mm -hmm. a fresh stove. Last night I woke up at 3.30 a.m. and I thought the house was on fire. It is triggering. Yeah. It happened to me too, but then I was like, oh, yes, it's something. 
Uh, June 23, AST 36, ALT 64, down from 98. Good deal. Uh, our liposomal extracts of dandelion, milk thistle, uh, burdock, okay with carnivore. Yes, they are okay, but they're also completely and totally unnecessary. You've already dropped it from 98 to 64 with, with carnivore. Just keep doing the carnivore. No, no hepatitis C, no alcohol. Perfect. Just keep eating carnivore and keep rechecking it every three months. You're going to see them keep coming right on down. And you can save the money that you would have wasted on dandelion and milk thistle and burdock and buy better quality meat. Now, water filter recommendations for showering and drinking water. So any water that you drink and cook with needs to either be distilled or reverse osmosis 100% of the time. That, that applies to everybody watching this all 5,151 of you, okay? You you don't need to drink, you don't need to trust your local municipality's water. Now, if you have well water and the well water's been tested, that can be legit awesome water. Same for if you have a spring and you drink real spring water, not that's been bottled by Coca-Cola and, and they say, oh, Mountain Valley Spring. No, that's, that's municipal water. It probably has fluoride in it. Okay. Mountain Valley Spring is actually. That's actually a good source. one. Yeah, that's so a good one. But you know, the Sonia okay. or whatever. Okay. He didn't mean to say that. The Sonia right? is just tap water that they ran through a filter. Okay, that's all it is. We all know that. Now I for know. showering, I don't think it's a. I don't think it matters. It matters. I don't think it's a big deal. To a point for your skin and hair. Now for looks, you mean? Yeah. Yes. It's like yes. hard water will mess up your hair. You may need to get something put on your shower head. It can mess with your skin, especially yeah. if you are prone to skin conditions mm. too. So. To a point, but it's not yeah. going to like. But health the wise. Fluoride is not going to sink into your skin. No, exactly. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it's a big deal. Now, some people worry about like you're taking a super hot shower, that the steam has got chlorine and fluorine molecules. You might in, in, inhale them. Maybe it's still going to be a minuscule amount. I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, but if so, there you can actually buy a whole house filter that takes all that stuff out of your water before it ever goes anywhere. But everybody watching, all 5,200 of you, you need reverse osmosis water or buy distilled water. You but if you buy burkey. distilled water, then you get worried about the plastic. Get a Berkey. You get a Berkey, 100%. A lot of people have those. They're good for emergencies, too. Oh, like have one in your house. I hope all y'all got a Berkey water filter in the Back closet, Berkey. just in case. So. Song Babe, 30 days carnivore, how long before I experience a reduction in disabling back pain, multi-level lumbar disc injury, and degenerative disc disease for 32 years. Gotcha. It's probably going to take longer than a month. Mm -hmm. It's going to take longer than a month. And depending on what's going on with your back, diet may not help much at all. Or diet may completely relieve your symptoms. Or it in may another... improve it some, but you may still need some other intervention. That, yes, you that's, the, fall anywhere yes on the that's the spectrum of possibilities. But what you're not, what's not going to happen is carnivore is probably not going to make it worse. Right? Oh, 100%. So. That's right. Yeah, it's going to improve it to some degree. We just don't know how much because I haven't seen your MRI. So I don't know. Y'all are being so nice about my hair tie. It looks amazing. I wasn't Thank joking. You. Got an air wrap for the week. <laughs> Justin, what's your opinion on adding herbs and spices to carnivores, such as cayenne, pepper, parsley, cilantro, garlic, rosemary? Thank you. Uh, I'm, not, I, I'm a big fan. I, I love it. herbs. Do you have steak in your teeth? <laughs> Just ate really quickly before it came on. I'm a big fan. What do you think? I don't think it's a big deal at all. It all the... boils down to are you sensitive to those things? Mm -hmm. Do you have diagnoses like multiple autoimmune diseases that could mm -hmm. potentially cause you to have sensitivity? Severe mental health and diseases. How are you going to figure that out? You're going to do a N equals one experiment where you take out all the herbs and spices and do a lion diet. So you're low for salt and ruminant meat only. And you're going to do that for good results, 30 days, better results, 60 days, best results, 90 days. And then reintroduce a small amount of whatever herb and, see how, you, for. and see how you react mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. And if you don't see any reaction, then it's, maybe you can have that on your, your proper human diet. So you don't have to call it carnivore. Now it's the Justin proper justin diet right? just indeed because diet. once you do that then who gives a crap that's right. what you call it right is it serving you are you meeting your health goals is everything looking the way you want it? are you going forward onward and upward excelsior hannah i was told i have stage one arthritis in my spine l1 and l2 can this be reversed or just managed i'm still pretty young worried about quality of life so stage one arthritis is the earliest stage where there's just tiny little evidence of degenerative changes. 
you can absolutely probably at this point completely reverse any symptoms you're having with the proper human diet. Uh, but also you're going to stop any further degeneration in its tracks effectively by removing all the inflammatory crap from your diet. Yes, absolutely. Would weight bearing activities improve? Oh, you absolutely. Life? And so uh, I'm glad you brought that up. That's very smart. A lot of people think with the back condition like this, well, it, it kind of hurts when I pick stuff up. So it should, maybe it's I could do me. that. Right. No, 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 no. Hannah Velasquez, you're going to purposefully lift stuff. Okay. You're going to lift heavy things. You're going to put your spine through its complete range of motion. You're going to be very active. You're going to run two or three days a week. Now, if you are fearful or uncomfortable, you can go to physical therapy, get a physical mm -hmm. therapist to show you the correct way to do those things. So you're comfortable and you know, yep. you're not going to hurt yourself. And once yep. you get those exercises down, then you don't have to keep going back to physical therapy. You can just learn That's how right. to do them on your own. Have them teach you because a good physical therapist will do that. They'll go out of their way to teach you how to do it at they home. They love but, to do it. Yeah. Love it. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Patricia. David, day eight on carnivore. Oddly enough, I have heartburn last night and mouth tastes kind of bad even after brushing. What thoughts? Mm, you may have had some reflux during the night. Uh, that happens occasionally. I predict as you continue to carnivore, this will happen less and less often until it's only a distant memory. Hey, guys, if you want to ask me questions about what we eat, cooking, kids keto or what I don't like to call it keto. Okay. I hate, I flip and hate the labels. Okay. But if you want to hear what we feed our kids, stuff like that, I also talk about fun things like girly things, feminine things. You can come chat with me tomorrow on my channel. I'm doing a live stream over there at 3 PM central. If you're not subscribed, go hit the button so you can get a notification. How do they find your channel? You just search for my name. N-E-I-S-H-A Nisha. Yeah, there's yeah, also a link down there. Yes, there is. You know, he put it in there like for weeks. <laughs> it didn't work. And somebody was finally like, uh, Link to Nisha's channel does not work. Yeah, I fixed it. I'm sorry about that. I apologize forever. Ripple South, could you please talk about why I should avoid HCTZ? Talk about HCTZ causing higher A1C, higher uric acid, higher uh, C reactive protein, and how to resolve the high levels. So you just did my talk for me. Those are the reasons that you should not take HCTZ. It will raise your blood sugar. It can raise your uric acid and it can cause your CRP to go up. So, also interfere with electrolyte levels. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It'll mess with your sodium and your potassium levels. Uh, try to get a, something else. Talk to your doctor. Thank you, Stephanie. Ottinger. If my name oh, growing yeah. up had been Kenny Hottinger, then I would be Dr. Hottinger. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, please. Like God knew what he was doing. Yes, yeah, that that would have been too much. Yeah. KW, 39-year-old CRP 6.9, that's high. TSH uh, 3.5, that could may or may not be high depending on your symptoms. Free T3-3, free T4-1, reverse T3-16, TPO-65, so you have Hashimoto's. A1C 4.8, that's great. Insulin 9.8, that's good. Uh, yeah, you do have Hashimoto's, yes. Low vitamin D, take a vitamin D supplement. High cortisol, learn how to cope with stress. Start a keto and intermittent fasting, huzzah. Opinion on labs and help. Opinion on carbs, yeah, uh, the lower carb, the better. You don't need to cycle carbs. No, that, none of that stuff is necessary. A really good resource for women who are menopausal, perimenopausal, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Wright. She has a lot of interviews here on YouTube, and she really focuses on that stage of life mm -hmm. for women but she also has a book for teenage girls too because that's the two wow our hormones are really wacky what is going on yep. right now so if you need to hear more about that specific topic she's a great and one person. of these days i'm going to have dr bright on this youtube channel yes. when she we has, can figure it out because uh, she lives in italy somewhere, somewhere. she lives good way that is good for women i think or fat is good for women and fat is good for girls i think that's the name of her book this is a great idea amber and I, this was my plan before everybody got the the barnyard trites, the backdoor shivers. Like the, well, not for Bonnie Blue, it wouldn't. Well, well, it was that one night. But Lord, listen, I did not know a baby. I did not know I a. I want to embarrass her. Let, wow. Poor thing. Wow. That, yeah, it was a lot. Okay. She's a lady. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. That's true. That's true. 
Patricia, Patricia again. What is your opinion on AAPDOB tests as a marker for cardiovascular disease? Do you have a dedicated Not video yet. about this? I, I care just as much uh, just I care just as much about your ApoB as I care about your LDL. Does that help, Patricia? I don't care. So you and Dr. Bickman mm -hmm. are going to have a discussion about this. Yeah, we're going to talk um, about you that. You have a clip that you guys discussed, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah? And then maybe we'll have him in the group to do a deep dive into yes. health markers when it comes yep. to cardiovascular health. I think that would be great. That would be awesome. That's a great idea. Alyssa, if you're watching. <laughs> Brittany, all red meat. We get access to fresh, organic, wild red meat, goat, lamb, beef, deer. I get hives and everything. I hope this diet will heal this. Gotcha. Yeah. So like we said earlier, Brittany, I'm sorry about this. I hate this for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, you, I, I told you earlier everything that you can eat and hopefully it will calm down your immune system so that you can actually eat the, the, the ruminants again. Dang it. That sucks. Stephanie, why carnivore if I have Hashimoto's? Please help me understand. So you may not need to do carnivore forever, but most thyroid experts, thyroid healthcare providers, endocrinologists, if they know about autoimmune diseases, they're going to tell you to do an elimination diet. Now, most of the time they're going to do the AIP, which is the autoimmune paleo protocol for a lot, for most people with autoimmune diseases that allows things to stay in your diet that are still causing inflammation like fruit and seeds and flowers that yeah. are maybe not wheat but are still inflammatory almond flour that type of thing carnivore is the ultimate elimination diet so you need to do it for at least good results 30 days better results 60 days optimum results i love this 90 this days you I just came stand up, up with that, that. i know <laughs> <laughs> and and then reintroduce the foods that you enjoy like if you don't enjoy broccoli don't bring it back that's a waste of time right yep. and start with the least inflammatory and work your way to most inflammatory and we talk about this inside the group all the time and then you'll be able to see and you monitor your symptoms there's a whole process you got to document your symptoms you need some baseline labs and carnivore is a tool to find where you're at when it comes to food sensitivities because those tests which i'm sure you've probably been told you need the food sensitivity blood tests are highly unreliable and inaccurate and Waste can tell you the complete opposite of what is actually the truth Absolutely. so the best the golden standard the gold standard is an elimination diet and carnivore is the ultimate elimination diet huzzah well said Thanks. well said robert farinelli 29 year old 5 foot 11 142 pounds up from 135 eat five egg whites five yolks one pound of beef four ounces of cheese uh 35 total carbs a day enough protein to gain weight which is is the better source lift uh 70 pounds 50 reps seven, four days with up from 40 pounds well you've gained seven pounds which is the better source of so protein? keep doing what you're doing and keep lifting heavy weights. Mm -hmm. You'll keep putting on muscle and making your bones stronger, both of which will show up on the scale. Huzzah, Robert. Keep it up. Kick ass. You ain't even 50 yet. Kelly, can you check my husband's numbers? A1C is 9.1. Terrible. Cholesterol, 221. Proglis red, 764. That's way high. Non-HDL, 194. Yeah, is that bad for triggs? Yeah. And how much of that is the metoprolol? So none of that's the metoprolol. Metoprolol. Okay. Yeah, or metoprolol. <laughs> There's two different ways to pronounce it. Uh, he's A1C. He's a severe type 2 diabetic. You can't blame that on the metoprolol. He's eating too many carbs or drinking too many carbs. Mm -hmm. He may not be doing it in front of you, Kelly, but they're going in there because you don't get an A1C of 9.1. Uh, because of metoprolol, mm -mm, no. Also, his triglycerides of 764, he's stuffing the carbs in his face hole, okay? And or whether, alcohol, too. Or alcohol, or that's both. right, yep. Whether you see it or not, it's going in. The, this man, this your man needs to be on a carnivore diet starting tomorrow. The, these, are, these are heart attack numbers, okay? I don't care about his total cholesterol. I'm talking about the A1C and the triglycerides. This is heart attack territory. If he had a heart attack tonight, I would be like, yeah, not really surprising. Get his ass on a carnivore diet starting tomorrow. And and it, you know the trick as a wife. If he don't want to do what you tell him to do, you know how to, you know how to, you know the leg cross trick, right? Okay. It's much easier to just like, like he's, anything is better than what he's doing, right? So if you can just convince him to start eating lazy keto, 
That's a right step start. in the right yes. direction. Yes. So if he's like, I'm not doing that, Kelly. I'm not doing carnivore. Okay. All right. How about we start buying low carb versions of things, right? Just mm -hmm. push it. Step. Ease yep. him. Feed him. Don't jerk him. Yep. Especially if he's the kind of man that. But I feel like Kelly, I feel like, like she's a jerker. I feel like she's going to be like, it doesn't okay, matter. mon frere. Okay. Dr. Barry said. But Kelly, it's not about you, right? That's true. It's about That's him true. and his health. And like, yeah. don't your whole mission here is to get him as healthy as possible. That's true. So even if you want to just smack him around and say, stupid, do you see these numbers? You're going to die. All right. Maybe just be like, I'm really terrified that you're going to have a heart attack and leave mm. me. Mm. And can you just do the littlest step? And then, you know, we'll try to clean it up as we go along. Just literally uh, anything. Because if you yeah. leave me alone because you I'm died gonna, then i'm gonna come and kill you right like i mean have a real conversation i'm being a little flippant right now but it is a serious mm. condition that he is yeah. going to have continue to escalate if he does not nip it in the butt so sit down and have a nip it in the butt nip it. you need to nip it have a real conversation have another <clears> dinner <throat> maybe go out have a romantic and just talk to him and be like i love you and mm -hmm. I, I want us to be healthy together mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this is about us growing old yeah. and being healthy and seeing our grandkids yeah. and etc cetera, etc cetera. like yeah. you gotta have a real conversation actually i want to change my answer <laughs> i want you to do what nisha said first and then if that doesn't work then eventually you're going to keep getting a little more and more until you have to do the leg cross. You get more flies with honey. Mm, she's you know? so right. She's so right. Thank you so much, Natural and Simple Living. Thomas, am I eating too much fat? <laughs> uh, creating non-optimal 19.7 total cholesterol. Uh, your total cholesterol is high. Okay, your HDL is great at 76. Your trigs are great at 86. LDL 345, uh, blah, blah, blah. A, A1C is 5.5. That's great. Glucose 111, that's fine. Uh, insulin uh, is, your fasting insulin is three. Dude, you're metabolically healthy. Keep doing exactly what you're doing, okay? Whatever you've been doing for the last three months, keep doing that. One more. CJ, struggling with patience. Any oh, tips? CJ. CJ. Okay, mm. first the Dr. Barry answer. Mm. CJ, quit being a baby. Duck it up, grow up, and do what you know you need to do. Okay, now I'll turn it over. All right, CJ, I want you to sit down and write down what you've done in the past. How did you eat in the past, and did it work for you? And that's the only thing I want you to do, because it's probably going to, the answer is going to be no. She's going to write her own answer, isn't she? Yeah. Oh, All that's right, so, so good. What's, what is the alternative? You keep moving forward, or you give up, and you go back to what you were doing, and you mm. feel as bad as you did, right? You have to have a gut check every once in a while and really come back to reality mm -hmm. and be like, what's, what is the alternative here? I feel I'm, I don't, I'm not getting the results as fast as I want to yada, yada, yada. But like, what's the alternative going back, turning back. That's like getting all the way to the airport for your dream vacation and not getting on the plane. Cause you have to go through TSA. Yeah, You're like, you go just forget it. I'm going right? home. Anything that you've ever wanted in your life, whether you wanted to play guitar, whether you wanted to play basketball, you never came out the gate to get the result that you wanted. You had to work for it. That's you got to so work true. for everything. You got to put some effort in. So you annoying. You got to have some patience. And even Michael Jordan sucked in the beginning. Okay? So, so true. Yes. think of this as learning a skill because that is exactly what you were doing. You're learning how to become healthy again. Why do and you always got to make such good sense? I Hey guys, if you like this video and this live stream, you're probably going to love it in the PhD community. Mm -hmm. So head down in the description, click that link, phdhealth.community. Mm -hmm. You can sign up for as little as five dollars a month and come hang out with us and the PhD coaches and have even more fun. We do we, you think we were entertaining today? Just, ugh, it gets yeah. way better. We can talk about anything we want to in the private community. This is an important <laughs> question. Our pediatrician recommends feeding all the common allergy foods to our son. Mm -hmm. Very early in life. What are your thoughts on doing this? Yes. 100% yes. Absolutely. And mo most of them are not going to be, like, they're not going to have to shove all these foods down their belly mm -hmm. every single day. So That's right. Eggs are one that kids can be Very allergic early. to. So we fed them eggs was one of the baby's first yep. foods. Scrambled eggs and butter. Yep. And then peanut butter 
Yep. But we got peanut butter in MCT oil that had no sweetener in it. It was the most disgusting peanut butter on the planet. Yep. Not that we eat <laughs> peanut butter. We got yep. it for the express purpose. But we introduced it to them. Has Bonnie we, done that yet? Yes. She's already. But the done. last thing you want your kid to have is peanut allergy, right? You yep. don't want them to have an egg allergy. Right. So these are just introduction foods, and mostly they're going to play with it and stuff. Yep. And just barely. But eat literally, it. if somebody has a severe peanut allergy, they could die if there's a peanut laying on the desk. Yeah. So just them playing with it and putting it in their mouth, that's going to be enough of an inoculation that their immune system goes, oh, okay, I got that. No big deal. Yeah, no, I think this is very important for all little ones. Doesn't mean you keep it in their diet as right. a regular item. Exactly. Just, you know, a few times over a year is going to give them that exposure. I totally agree. Now, I'm so sorry, Nisha. What were you saying? About? Join the PhD Health community. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. <laughs> if you do. If you don't join our private community, then you're going to have to wait until next Monday night. Yeah. And Nisha's liable to quit between now and then. I might. This might be the last time you ever see her if you don't join the community. But no, I'll be live on my channel, 3 p.m. Central, if you want to go hang out with me and we talk about health, wellness, books, kids, dogs, sheep. Backyard chicken. What did you think? I didn't know what you were about to say. N E I S H A. That's her. All right, guys. That's it. We're out.